Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. My name is Mariko Croswell, and I'm the Grace Kids Director here at Grace Honolulu. You know, I am looking forward to the day when we can meet together as a church and as a children's ministry in person. You know, eight months ago, when we learned that we had to move our children's ministry fully online, I felt so outmatched and overwhelmed. But you know, God provided. We were given permission to share our children's ministry curriculum online. I learned how to build a website and I made my very first video. We do learn something new every day and God gives us the ability to do that. And as we wrap up our series on the Lord's Prayer, we'll be focusing on a verse that really has come to hit home for me during this pandemic. If you missed the first three parts of our series, you can find them on our YouTube channel. As pastors Greg and Chris and Randy and Sean and Matt shared, in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Jesus gives us a framework for prayer, worship, confession, thanksgiving, and intercession. We worship God for who he is. In doing this, we put God in his right and proper place. We confess what we've done. We put ourselves in our right and proper place. And we give thanks for all God has done. I encourage my children and our Grace Kids not to just thank God one day a year or one month a year, but every day. And then we intercede. We present our request to God for ourselves and on behalf of others. So as we start looking into this portion of the Lord's Prayer, let's say the passage together. You know, this summer, our Grace Kids were challenged to memorize the Lord's Prayer, and I'd like to invite them to join us in saying it together right now. I'll be using the new International Reader's Version that we use in Grace Kids because I love how it presents this prayer in such a clear and understandable way. Are you ready? Let's go. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, just as we also have forgiven those who have sinned against us. Keep us from sinning when we are tempted. Save us from the evil one. Awesome job, everyone. So I have a question for you all. Just like me, how many of you felt that there wasn't enough, especially during the last eight months? Enough time, energy, resources, patience, grace, and something that I never thought that I would say before, enough toilet paper. There's not enough of you to meet all the needs swirling around you. Now, for me personally, I have struggled with this feeling, and I can imagine that you all can relate to this too. We are exhausted, we are drained, and we are over it. So how many of you have had a difficult time having hope for today with this feeling of having not enough? Hope for today, let alone even tomorrow. Now, hope is a feeling of trust. And so if we're looking for hope, where can we find it? And today, we'll discover a part of the Lord's Prayer that shows us where we can find our hope, where to place our hope and our trust. So let's take a deeper look into Matthew 6, 11. It's one short sentence, six words, but it is so powerful. In this verse, Jesus says, give us today our daily bread. Now we're going to look at each part, but I'm going to switch up the order a little. So bear with me because I will be saving the best part for last. Now, when we say give us, we're asking, we're acknowledging that we don't have it all under our control and that we're turning to someone to provide. And this brings us to the first part of the verse. We need to turn to our God. Now that we know who we turn to for hope, for provision, what are we asking for? What are we trusting and hoping for? When Jesus taught this prayer to his disciples, he was referring to something concrete to ask for, for the bread, for the food that would sustain their physical bodies. And while it is very important for us to realize that God is the ultimate provider for the literal bread in our lives, I want to challenge us to look beyond that and to expand our view to include all the other areas in our lives in which we need God's provision. 
The Bible, it is so awesome like that. It is living and active. It applies to those who read it when it was written thousands of years ago, and it still applies to us today. So if we aren't only asking God for food, what are we asking him for? Well, we are asking God for provision for all the things that we need to make it through the day. To the online distance learning homeschooling parents, let me be honest with you. This has not been my finest moment as a mom. I'm quite mortified at how I have handled this entire situation. I have two elementary boys learning online and a preschooler at home. And that feeling of not having enough, I feel it every day, especially on school days. Trying to wear so many hats has showed me that I can be so irritable, impatient, and unkind. So to all the parents out there, I stand with you in prayer. Now, more than ever, we need God's energy, His patience, and His grace just to make it through the first Zoom meeting of the day without a tantrum from us. And for our frontline workers, we pray for your protection and for your health as you help so many people. For our students, we pray for favor and wisdom for you and strength to finish your exams and to finish them well. For those of us who are anxious and worried, we pray for God's peace and his comfort. And for those of us who are trying to make ends meet, especially during the, with the holidays upon us, we pray for hope, for financial provision. So first we know that we need to ask God. And now we see that we need to ask him to provide for everything, everything that we need. Now, have any of you ever taken the Enneagram assessment? The Enneagram is a system of personality typing that describes patterns in how people interpret the world and manage their emotions. I am an Enneagram one with a subtype of self-preservation, which really just means that I worry. I am a perfectionist. I plan and prepare so that things go well tomorrow. And I also worry about tomorrow and if there will be enough. But what does Jesus teach his disciples, and now us, about worrying about today or tomorrow? The disciples didn't have robust 401ks, government-funded stimulus checks, or a sound investment strategy. If I were them, I'd be worried. This takes us to the third part. How often do we turn to God for provision? And we look at what the scripture says, and Jesus says, Give us today our daily bread. Notice what Jesus isn't saying. He's not saying give it to us this year or this week or even tomorrow. He's saying today and every day. So how do we make it through the day with hope instead of worry, especially during these difficult times? We make it through when we turn to God every day. And sometimes, at least for me, it's many, many times a day. I recently read that gratitude and anxiety, they cannot co coexist. One cancels out the other. So too, I think that hope and worry cannot coexist. When I hope, I do not worry. And when I worry, I do not have hope. You know, throughout my life, whenever I worried, my dad always pointed me to this verse, and it comes shortly after the Lord's Prayer. And it's from Matthew 6, 25-34. I don't have time to read the whole verse, but I want to share with you just a portion of it. And it says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And I love this passage. It says, Don't worry, because God already knows what we need. He is already prepared to give us what we need when we need it. Trust God. Put your hope in Him. Now, King David in Psalm 119, 105 also helps us to understand God's daily provision. He says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. God shines His light so we can see the next step, so we have what we need to move forward, but not too far forward. And one of my favorite scriptures that helps me to refocus and to have hope instead of worry is Lamentations 3, 22 to 24. You see, the author Jeremiah was afflicted by others and at times felt that God was against him as well. But in, in the midst of his pain and suffering, he returns to who God is. 
and he says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. So what does it mean when we say the Lord is my portion? It means that we trust God to be the ultimate source of our provision. In Genesis 22, we are introduced to one of the names of God, Jehovah Jireh, which means our great provider. And while I don't have time to go through this passage fully today, I do want to encourage you to read it and to see how the Lord was Abraham's great provider. And when we see God as Jehovah Jireh, our great provider, we experience a hope that cancels out worry, a hope that trusts God to provide even when our bank accounts are at zero even when our businesses are struggling and may not survive the next month, even when our exams and papers are piling up and up and up and we don't see how we'll get it done, even when we get a diagnosis that isn't favorable, even then we have hope because God shows up. Now there's one very special moment in my life when God showed up and provided in a way that I would not have expected. I was eight months pregnant with our youngest child, and it was no surprise to anyone that I had her birth all planned out. We were going to watch my, um, who was going to watch my two older boys and the family would, that would be around to help us adjust. But unlike me, God knew what I needed and when I needed it. My aunt on the mainland had an unexpected week off, found great plane fares, and decided to come for a visit to give me a week of rest before we welcomed our new baby. But God really knew why she was coming, why she had that unexpected week off, and why she found great plane fares. God knew that my daughter would surprise us all and be born a month early. In less than 24 hours after my aunt arrived, we were holding our little ones in our arms. My parents and my brother had not yet arrived to take care of my boys, but my God knew and sent my aunt so that I did not have to worry, so that I could focus on my baby girl. Now, my aunt, she recently went home to be with Jesus, and I now see that God also provided my daughter and me with this beautiful memory of her and how he provides. So, go back, so going back to my initial question, if you feel like there isn't enough in your life, what can you do instead of worrying and feeling anxious? Where do we find our hope? In whom do we trust? Now I have two practical steps that we can take every day to help us find our hope, our provision in God. The first is like our worship team encouraged us to do today, we can run to our Father, we can pray to Him. We worship, confess, give thanks, and intercede. We present our needs and requests to God for He is our great provider. And I want to encourage you, as you choose to run to the Father, it's really just a conversation between you and Him. We always tell our Grace Kids that God created each of us unique. So too then, while we use the same framework that Jesus gives to us to pray, our individual prayers, our style of conversation, the words that we use, it will be unique, a one-of-a-kind conversation between you and your Father. The second is to write it down. Write down the verses that point you to God and His provision for our needs and remind you of His truth. Because hope and worry, they cannot coexist. So we replace our worry and feeling of not having enough with God's hope. Now, I've seen so many examples of this from so many people lately. There are books of where they've written it down. And I think especially now, more than ever, we all need to have a tangible reminder that we can carry with us wherever we go. And as we start it all again tomorrow, because the Lord's mercies, they are new every morning, and we need to choose every day to put our hope in Him. And now it's my honor to introduce Josiah, our youth director, to you. He is going to share with us about the freedom that comes when we realize that our Father supplies all of our needs. Thanks, Mariko. Church, isn't that amazing? We can have faith and hope because we have God as our provider. As God provides for our daily needs, we have the freedom to give out of the blessings in our lives to others. And just this past month, during one of our Impact Youth Friday night services for our middle schoolers and high schoolers, I spoke on the story of Jesus healing the 10 lepers. While Jesus was on his journey, 10 lepers came and asked him to heal them. And on the way to the temple, they were healed, but only one of them returned, praising God in a loud voice. 
He wanted to let everyone know what God had done in his life and praise God for his goodness. When Jesus saw the man, the only one out of the ten to return to praise him, he said, rise and go, your faith has made you well. Now all of them were healed, but the Samaritan that returned to praise God was changed. His gratitude and realization of what God had done for him changed his whole being. Not only the disease that plagued his physical body, but his heart's condition. And while we realize that God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, having faith that he will provide for our needs each and every day, we live differently. I can't help but to praise God in a loud voice because of who he is and what he's done for us. Because God provides, our, our daily needs are met and our hearts should change. The way that we carry ourselves, interact with people at the grocery store, treat our families, reach out to our friends, serve our community, and in our prayers should reflect the goodness of God's provision. Matthew 6, 11, like Monica uh, was saying, says, give us today our daily bread. Now, the scripture here doesn't say, give us today my daily bread. The act of breaking bread, sharing a meal was of great importance in their culture as it still is today. And as we pray and ask God for his provision, it's not only for us, for ourselves, but for others as well. Even though this past year has been unlike any other, and while we all struggle in our own ways, be it financially, relationally, emotionally, or physically, we've seen the generosity of this church. As we f uh, film here at the new home for Grace Honolulu, we're so amazed by God and our church to have the vision of what this place could become, not only as a building or meeting place for our church, but as a light on a hill to this Moilili community, where people can come and have the same hope that we have in Jesus. Just a few months ago, we began receiving offerings toward this place. And in that short period of time, we received over $800,000 toward our $1 million goal. And I've seen God's grace over and over and over again in the process of taking ownership of this place. Now, our generosity hasn't only been financial. As you may have seen in our weekly uh, updates and today as well, we've got a team that comes and serves throughout the week, beautifying the property, giving them their time and energy to help prepare this place for when we're able to meet again soon. And as Mariko shared, through these past eight months, moving to completely online services, our worship team, our filming and editing crew, uh, our Grace Kids and our Impact Youth as well has had to put in the extra effort. We have to adapt to make the best out of this current situation and continue the ministry that God has called us to. In other avenues, we've held two food drives recently where members of our church, including youth and families, waved signs, uh, collected and boxed canned goods. And many of you came by to drop off uh, food so that we could give back to many who are struggling for even the basic necessities. And we've seen our church continue to be generous with our time, talents, and treasures through this season. And as we continue into this holiday season where life can get even busier, more stressful, and worry can quickly overwhelm us, let's remember that God provides for us so that we can be his hands and feet to reach out to those that desperately need it in this season. Uh, just as I celebrated Thanksgiving this past week with my family, minus a few that couldn't make it, I caught myself worrying about the recent rise in cases in the future, whether or not my brother would be able to come home from the mainland for Christmas, uh, how the recent spike seems like, man, going to next year, is it going to be any better? How that's going to slow down our plans for education, for work, for our youth ministry, where we're all waiting to get back together in person, uh, but thinking of ways that we can be creative to use Zoom to stay connected in this season. And I, just like Mariko, am a type one. I worry extensively about everything, uh, which sometimes can stop me from seeing all the ways that God provides. But I've got my health, my family, my amazing grace group, and peace on days where I needed it in these past few months specifically. But somehow God pro always provides enough to get me through the day and just a little more so I can look outwards where I can bless others. 2 Corinthians 9.13 says, Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ, and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in the scripture, Paul writes to the church in Corinth, encouraging them God provides all they need abundantly, not just so they can be comfortable or not have to worry, but to bless others and in being generous with what they had, others would see their faith and praise God. And this remains true for us today. God provides our daily needs so that we can bless others and share the hope that we have in Him. So as we pray, let's follow the framework that was laid out uh, this past month through Matthew 6. 
And first we'll worship him for who he is, Jehovah Jireh, our provider for everything that we need daily. Next we confess. Oftentimes we fall into the trap of worrying about the future and losing the faith that we have in God even after all he's done for us. Third, we thank God that he provides, that he has provided and he will provide, uh, especially in times of need. And fourth, we intercede. We ask God, give us today our daily bread. Provide for us all that we need today, not for tomorrow or next year, but for today. Help us to look outward and be generous with all that we have been given so that, you, that, so that he might be glorified. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are Jehovah Jireh our provider for all of our daily needs. We confess that so often we forget your provision and worry about our needs and rely on our own strength when we all we have to do is trust in your word and your promises. Thank you for your faithfulness, providing all that we needed in this past season and blessing us above and beyond what we asked for. Lord, we come to you and ask you to provide for all our needs today and give us opportunities to share your love with others. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't done this yet, please subscribe to our channel for sermons, stories, and other really inspiring content. Uh, also follow us on social media, and you can also download our Grace Honolulu app for updates. So stay connected with us. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and God bless you.